we were told that <clears throat> we could make you both, make you all suffer twice <laughs> with our reception. Uh, but I uh, wanted to share with you a different aspect of Menninger's contribution to Bert, Ma Bert Nash and others. Um, we, Roy and I, and my brother Phil, are, are appreciative of the recognition that really comes from the work that was done by our forebears. The monograph that has been handed out, uh, the history of the Burt Nash Center, makes reference to the fact that Dr. Carl spoke to the Kiwanis Club in Lawrence in 1922 and was involved in establishing a nervous clinic. I'm not sure what a nervous clinic is, um, but at any rate, uh, the involvement then with Bert Nash and Dr. Carl and over the years, uh, the additional liaison at various times, and then with the creation of the Menninger School of Psychiatry after World War II, uh, a number of our graduates trained in Topeka but came here and plied their work here and three early directors, Sig Gundel and H.G. Uh, Whittington and Gary Lee were directors of the Burt Nash Center along the way. But I'd like to share with you a less well-known facet, a contribution of our father, Dr. Will Menninger, uh, during uh, the 60s. Early in 1962, a number of folks working on mental health center legislation in Washington thought it would be helpful if Dr. Will, uh, or, or actually if the president, uh, John F. Kennedy, could be briefed about the problems of mental illness. And they approached Dr. Will to do this. And Dr. Will was saying, look, there are a lot of renowned psychiatrists in Washington and New York. You should ask them to do this, but apparently uh, they learned that uh, President Kennedy said if he couldn't see Dr. William Menninger, he was not going to see any psychiatrist. <laughs> now, there is a connection because uh, President Kennedy's sister, Eunice Kennedy Shriver, uh, was active in mental retardation and mental health, and she actually served on the Board of Governors of Menninger, so we, there, there was a, a relationship there. So uh, they told Dr. Will, look, we need you to do this. So he made an appointment, and in, in, uh, on February 9th, 1962, he was in Washington to visit the president at the White House. Uh, I actually have a photograph of that meeting uh, put there with, um, Dr. Will described his visit in his collected papers. He wrote it up and, and put it in there. He said he shared with the president some of the issues and challenges faced by the mental health agencies and hospitals. And then, and I quote him, somehow the discussion moved into the problems of family life. And the president said that his two little children were quite different in age and they should not be rivals but he was aware of how tense they were at times in relation to each other, and he could see a conspicuous rivalry. Dr. Will's comment was that, of course, this is a universal kind of problem that has much to do with the shaping of our personalities. And we as parents, if we're humble at all, often wish we had guidance and knew the best way to handle these matters for the sake of our children. As Dr. Will gave the president more information on the neglected state of the mentally ill, he told him, and I quote, most of all, we wanted his interest in the field. He said, we want somebody of your stature who will stand up with us and be counted. So many have been afraid to stand up with us. And he then commented, Mr. President, you're probably gonna be getting, you're probably gonna get your leg pulled because you have been talking to a psychiatrist. And he replied, you are possibly right, but that's all right, I can take that. As the conversation neared an end, the president suggested they have the photographers come in and they continued to chat while being photographed, and this is one of the pictures that was taken. 
President Zerv, this will let people know a little about my interest. Later, Dr. Will reflected on the warm and gracious visit and felt a real and sincere interest in the President's attitude. He was not sure what the President might ultimately do. But a year later, on February 3rd, 1963, President Kennedy sent a message to the Congress relative to mental illness and mental retardation. That message sounded much like Dr. Will's address to many of the state legislatures across the country. It had the same fervent appeal. For the first time in history, a president of the United States identified himself with a national problem of mental illness and mental retardation. Again, thank you for the honor you accord our family. On behalf of a very grateful Burt Nash Mental Health Center, it is my privilege to present you with the 2011 Pioneer Award.